welcome to our first English service for 2021. It sounds strange just saying that, but um, I'm excited for this year. I've got a massive expectation and I'm praying that God will do something awesome in your life in this coming year. Before we start, let's close our eyes and pray together. God, thank you for the massive privilege of joining once again this morning. And I pray that every person that's uh, under the sound of my voice will experience um, your calmness for this year, will experience excitement for this year, because we know as believers that you are in control. God, thank you that your word teaches us that you let everything work out for those who love you. And um, God, I want to pray this morning that we will take that to heart and that we will live that out this year. I pray that in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So um, we are launching our year theme this morning and uh, we're going to talk about essentials. Last year, this was a buzzword, essential workers, essentials, the things that we cannot live without. And uh, that's why when we were praying about the, the theme of 2021, we experienced this word, essentials. What are the essentials that you as a believer need to have in your life in order to um, go forward, in order to live this life that God has called you to live for? And the first thing is the word. We're going to talk about the word in January, the word of God. It's a, it's a living, breathing thing. It's, it's something that we cannot go without. And so um, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Um, but we need to always approach the Word of God with a certain mindset and understand certain things, um, what the power of the, of the Word is, but also that the enemy does not want us to read God's Word. And uh, this we can see in Ephesians uh, 6.12. I'm reading to you out of the New Living Translation. It says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. John 10 verse 10 says, The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying love. You see, God's dream for me and for you is that we will have this rich and satisfying love. But the enemy wants to destroy us. And the enemy knows that if he can keep us out of God's word, that we will um, never get to a place where we fully reach this dream that God has for our lives. And so um, while I was uh, reading these two uh, pieces of scripture in Ephesians 6, 12 and John 10, 10, um, I experienced uh, this uh, 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 symbolism that I, that I was reminded of in the past uh, holiday. We went to KZN and we had a, such an amazing time. And we went to this uh, uh, one uh, place called uh, uh, Elan Gorge. Uh, which is between the mountains and it's a it's it's very a, a very nice place but in, the, in this place there are a lot of snakes and uh, they actually uh, um, got one of their snakes which was a python which uh, was uh, um, after it died they they took the skin and put it up against the wall and it was like three meters long and uh, i was standing looking at the snake and my mother-in-law came in and she stood next to me and um, I, I told her i asked her the question do you know how a python kills its prey and she says yeah it um it, it it crushes them and i said that's not technically correct the way a python kills its prey is by squeezing the air out of that prey in other words every time that uh, it wraps itself around something and 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 that prey goes in it just wants to take a little bit of breath it squeezes a little bit more and it squeezes a little bit more and the way a python actually kills its prey is actually by suffocating it and while i was telling her this story i was thinking but this is exactly the tactic that the enemy uses to squeeze the life out of you and out of me he he he, he aims to go and to silence the breath of god within us and to take it out of us because if he can do that he can silence god's voice in our lives because we're so distracted that we don't listen to what god says anymore we don't read what god says to us anymore you see, I, I, I've learned in my life this quote that I've heard a long time ago is so true. If the enemy can distract you, the enemy can destroy you. You see, and that, that is so important for me and you as believers to realize. Because the first thing, if you want to know, I've written down three things to identify. If you want to know today if the, if the, if the enemy is squeezing the spiritual life out of you, these three things will, will, will definitely be markers to tell you that it, that it is so. The first thing is 
that you're not getting into the Word of God. You, you, you constantly have uh, um, uh, uh, reasons why I'm too tired or I overslept. Or, uh, and it's this constant thing of not spending time in God's Word. And before you know it, you, you, you don't have any more. You, you, your day is over. You didn't spend time with God. You didn't talk to God. There's this constant reason why you're not talking to God, not reading the Bible, not spending time in His Word. You see, the, the thing about God's Word is, is He's speaking to us through His Word. Even in 2021, His Word is so relevant. And if the enemy can get us not to spend time in His Word, the enemy is silencing God in our lives. And this is something that we as believers need to realize. The, the second thing is, um, the enemy will always, uh, if, if, if you want to know if you're in an attack, the enemy will always remind you of how great the past was before you gave your life to Jesus. He'll tell you things like, remember how fun those parties were? Remember how many friends you actually had? It was such easier days. Why don't you just go back to that old life? And you see, the reason the enemy does this is because he, he, he knows that as Christians, we, have the, uh, we are uh, um, so guilty of having amnesia. We, we actually forget that the, the past was not that great. But the enemy reminds us that it was great. And we, we just remember the good things. We don't remember how lonely we were. We don't remember how we felt after every party. We were drunk the next day and we feel, I will never do this again. We don't remember that, but we remember the highs. And so he, he knows that. And that's why he tells us, go back to your past. Start doing the things you did in the past again. And the third thing that the enemy does that I've seen so countless times in, in many people's lives and even in my own life is he will, he will tell you, you will start uh, um, thinking, I, I shouldn't spend time with godly people. I should avoid godly people. I, should, I shouldn't go to church. I shouldn't you know, talk to, my, to th that one colleague that I have that's a Christian. I should, I, I should keep away from them. Because they're just going to judge me. They, they, I, I should avoid them. And the, the reality is when we start doing that, we start drifting and farther, farther away. And the reason the enemy does this is because he knows when we spend less and less time in God's word, we, we start to forget the truth of what God's word says about us. That day where his spirit is, there is freedom. That, that in him, when we, when we are connected to the vine, we have life and that in abundance. You see, so when we, when we don't spend time in God's word, that's the result. And the, the, the second thing is we, we start to long back to, to our old lives because the enemy wants to take us back to our old lives. And then thirdly, the people that can correct us and tell us that we're on the wrong path, we, we don't spend time with them. We avoid them. So he's starting to squeeze this life out of us. And that's why God's word is so important in 2021. Daily spending time in his word. I want to encourage you today. That the best and, and, and I want to suggest that the, the real only effective way to break this uh, uh, spirit of python on us, this, this, this python coming to squeeze the life out of us, is by basically going and saying, God, I'm going to read your word. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to sing psalms over my life. I'm going to spend time in your word and your word is going to tell me who I am. Because when we spend time in God's word, it changes the way we look at our situation. It changes the way that we look at, uh, at, at things happening at work, at, at the current situation of the world. We know that there's hope because God's word says so. But when we don't spend time in God's word, we become distant to this truth. The truth that God's word teaches us, that he has a life for us and that in abundance. So this is the truth that we should always approach the Bible with. The enemy wants to destroy us, John 10, 10. But God came to give us life and that in abundance. When we spend time in His Word, we remind ourselves of these promises that God has a plan for our lives. I want to challenge you today. After this message, go to your Bible, open it up and start reading. If you don't know where to read, start with the Gospel. Start with Mark and read the story of Jesus and what Jesus did for us on the cross. And when you finished with, with, with Mark, maybe go to Acts and read something in Acts and, and just, you know, a journey through, through the Bible and ask God to speak to you. The YouVersion Bible app is such a great tool to help you with this. Spend time in God's Word. Don't make it a New Year's resolution. Make it a life resolution, something that you commit yourself to. I want to hear what God says to me every single day. Let's pray together. God, thank you this morning that every single person listening to this message, that you have a plan for them, you have a dream for them. Lord, and you're not finished with them yet. And I want to pray, Lord, that this year, that they will experience this by reading your word, 
by reading the truths that you dream about them, that you want to share with them. Thank you, God, that this day I can come and pray that they will experience the truth of your word. I want to pray for every single person listening to my voice right now, that they will have a hunger that they've never experienced before for your word, that they will so long to know you more, to know what you say about them. Lord, so that the, the, this, this python that's coming to squeeze the life out of us will lose all its power because your word teaches that you have overcome him. You have overcome the enemy and you have shown him who is the true God, who is the one who's really in control. But only by spending time in your word can we realize this. Thank you, God, that you will um, show this to every single person that's listening to this message. I pray for this hunger for your word and I pray that in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We will see you again next week here on Corpus Online. Bless you.